I want to pose this question to you. We've got Daisy Duck, and she has a nest on the edge of a pond. And from her favorite feeding spot, she can either waddle on land around the pond to her nest, which is the 80 by 60 meters that is shown in the diagram, or she can swim across the pond to the nest. Okay, now here's the deal. Daisy waddles more quickly than she swims. Okay, and she waddled at the rate of 30 meters per minute, and she swims at the rate of 20 meters per minute. So the question is, which route is quicker to travel to her favorite feeding spot? So should she waddle on the land or swim in the pond? All right, so don't, don't try to answer this yet, but think about what kind of information do you need in order to solve this? Hopefully, you were thinking we have to use um, a theorem in order to solve her dilemma, and that's the Pythagorean theorem. I've seen this before, I know, but a reminder, Pythagorean theorem, that's the one that says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Another way of saying that is leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So a reminder about some vocabulary. Pythagorean theorem only works if you have a right triangle. So a triangle is right if it has one 90 degree angle in it. Okay, and in a right triangle, the side across from the 90 degree angle, which is also going to be the longest side, is called the hypotenuse. Okay, and we always label that as C when we're using the A squared plus B squared equals C squared. When we talk about the legs, of the right triangle. We're talking about the two sides of the triangle that meet at the 90 degree angle. Okay, and it doesn't matter which one you label as A and B, but both of those are legs. Okay, and that's our Pythagorean theorem. So make sure you have the Pythagorean theorem written down somewhere in your notes. Make sure you know it is used for only use in a right triangle, okay? And you can only use it if you know two sides. If you don't know those two things, then you can't use Pythagorean theorem, okay? The other vocabulary I want to talk about is the Pythagorean triple. And that a Pythagorean triple is a set of three positive integers. What do I mean by integers? Integers are whole numbers, and since they're talking about positive, we're, only, we're not talking about the negative ones. So they have to be whole numbers that work in the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so no decimals, no square roots or anything. They have to be whole numbers if it's going to be considered a Pythagorean triple. All right, so let's apply this Pythagorean theorem just as a review. Hopefully it's review. Find the length of the hypotenuse of this right triangle, and then we're going to say whether the side lengths form a Pythagorean triple. So we're going to set this up. So our hypotenuse is like our C value, so that's going to be on the side all by itself. So we're going to do x squared. So we're going to do 8 squared plus 15 squared equals x squared. Again, I'm following this, this a squared plus b squared equals c squared formula. Okay, so 8 squared is 64. 15 squared is 225. Add those two together. You might want to get out your calculator. 289. And if you try to take the square root of 289, you do get a whole number, which is 17. So this hypotenuse has a length of 17. So it's asking, is this a Pythagorean triple? Well, are all of the sides whole numbers? Yes. So we would say the set 8 15, 17 is a Pythagorean triple. Okay? So, 
You can also use this to not just find the hypotenuse, but you can use it to find a leg. So in this right triangle, we're missing a leg, but notice we have two other pieces of information. Just be careful when you set this up. When we're doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the c is the 20, so make sure you're putting that in the correct spot. Otherwise, I have x squared plus 15 squared. So 15 squared is 225. 20 squared is 400. Subtract the 225. 175. And then take the square roots. So now if I try to take the square root of 175, <clears throat> I get approximately... 13.23, okay, which is, which is not a whole number. So this is not a Pythagorean triple. All right, um, now, as far as answers go, it really depends on what they want. Here they didn't specify if they wanted a decimal or not. Um, do you notice how I didn't put x is equal to 13.23? I put the squigglies, that means it's approximately equal to. So that means I rounded. My answer is not exact. All right, it, there's some rounding in there. Um, it could be more accurate if I put more decimals, and I can always put more decimals. Okay, so another way to be more exact is to just say x equals the square root of 175. That is an exact answer because I didn't round, right? That shows exactly how you can get to your decimals, no matter how many decimals you want. Now, later we will talk about how to simplify the square root to make it a more simplified version of the square root of 175. But for now, just leave it as the square root of 175. All right, so practice these on your own. So you're finding the value of x and then stating whether they are triple. So pause the video right now, do them, and then I will show you my answer. Okay, so let's look at our answers. On this first example, you should have gotten the square root of 208, 208, which is approximately 14.42, which means that this is not a Pythagorean triple since the square root of 208 is not a whole number. All right, um, just to comment on the kind of work I'd want to see on this type of problem, because I write a lot when I'm doing my notes, I would expect to see your setup, and I would expect to see at least this and this, okay? Those are the kinds of things I need to see in order to see where your brain is headed. If all I see is just this last arrow, okay, that doesn't help me see how you got to that process. So please show your work, and when I say show your work, I at least need to see your setup, how you simplified, and then how did you get your answer, okay? So second example, you should have gotten x equals seven, which means that it is a triple, so we have a triple of seven, 24, and 25. So we have two examples where we had triples, so seven, 24, 25 was one, and then eight, 15, and 17 was another one. Um, triples are nice, Here's a list of a bunch of triples. Now, there are infinitely many, of course, but, um, but some ones I want you to pay attention to and you might want to write down um, is definitely this first, these first ones. These are ones I see a lot, all right? I'm trying to see if there are any other ones that I see often. Mm, I'm not seeing them. So these are our Pythagorean triples that you, were, you will see a lot now. The other thing I want to make note about is you can multiply these triples by any number you want. So let's take this 3, 4, 5. If I multiplied by 2, that would give me 6, 8, 10. If I multiplied that by 3, that would be 15, no, 15. That would be 9, and then 12 and then 15, 
okay? So 6, 8, 10, and 9, 12, 15 are also Pythagorean triples. And then any multiple of any of those triples are also triples. So I just wanted to point that out to you. <clears throat> Sometimes if you can recognize them, like 3, 4, 5 is a very easy one to memorize. And their um, multiples are pretty easy to recognize as well. So if you recognize that, then you can go straight to your answer. And I would be okay if you recognize, oh, x is 3. And you can just put like the Pythagorean triple right by it to show your work, okay? So that is a cool thing, like a nice shortcut that we can take. All right, I just want you to look at these real quick and see if you can find the errors. All right, I really like doing these types of problems so you can um, see what kinds of common mistakes I see. So if you, you're kind of like the teacher now and you're trying to figure out where did the student go wrong? Okay, so I'll give you some time, pause the video, look at those and then we'll discuss them. So in this first one, do you notice that they put the hypotenuse in the wrong spot? Okay, so <clears throat> 26 is the hypotenuse, and that should go in the C spot. So it should be 10 squared plus 24 squared equals 26 squared. Okay. Over here, they set that up correctly, so that looks good. But they did the wrong order of operations. They tried to add the 7 and the 24 first before squaring. Remember, um, in our order of operations, that powers, our parentheses come first, then exponents, then multiplication, division, then very last is addition. So that's what they did incorrectly there. Okay? All right. So I'm going to stop there. And, um, and then we can discuss more about the Pythagorean theorem and triples and, and all kinds of that, all things like that in class and do more practice. But, but actually, before I just remembered about poor Daisy. Let's go back to Daisy. Now that we've discussed the Pythagorean theorem, let's go back to her. All right, so um, knowing that what we know now, do you see how 60 and 80, this almost looks like a Pythagorean triple of 6, 8, 10, right? But it's not 6, 8, 10. It's 6D, 80. So what would this third side be? 100. So um, this length of that triangle would be 100. Now, is that enough to figure out what we're doing? Well, we need to then use her rate. If we do, um, remember distance is equal to your rate times your time. Well, we're trying to we're trying to figure out how long will it take. So if I want to solve for time, I want to take her distance and divide by the rate, right? So for swimming, we know her distance is 100 meters and she swims at a rate of 20 meters per minute. Okay, so if we do 100 divided by 20, we just get 5. Okay, so what does that mean? That means it's going to take her 5 minutes to swim. Let's do the same thing now if she waddles. Now, if she's waddling, she's doing the distance is 80 plus 60. So 80 plus 60 is 140. So for waddling, her distance is 140 meters but she's going a lot faster at 30 meters per minute. All right, so 140 divided by 30, that's gonna be 4.6 repeating, which is less time than five minutes, right? Not by much, but just a little bit. So if this were um, a, a problem on a test or like a ACT problem, you would say it's better to waddle and if this were a test for me, you would show me all your work and explain why waddling would be better.